Hi, it's Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video, I'm going to show you how to do a USB fast flash on the MSI B650M Gaming Plus Wi Fi. Now, this is actually going to be one of those videos where it is probably going to be quite helpful because there are two versions of this board on the market, one of which is the non M version or the full size version, and there's also the micro ATX version. So, make sure that when you get the actual bars for the board, you do get the right one so when you go to the msi site make sure you're looking at the micro atx and not the full size atx because otherwise it just won't flash the bios now what are you going to need to flash the bios well first of all you're going to need a working computer pc laptop etc to actually download the bios onto and also you'll need to format a usb stick to the fat32 file system also you're going to need something to actually put the motherboard onto uh, ideally a box now a lot of people do say about this Mike, you always do your BIOS updates with a bare board. And that is generally what I feel is the best way of doing it because that way, if you're trying to flash the BIOS and there's some kind of error and it's not flashing, you can rule out any other components such as your CPU, your memory, your graphics card, M.2 drives, all that kind of stuff. So for me, the bare board is the way to go. But if you have got a fully built system and for some reason your new Ryzen 9000 series or 8000 series processor isn't working, don't worry, you don't really have to disassemble your computer. You can just maybe pull out the RAM that would be my suggestion, but you can do it on a fully built system, but ideally you want to do it onto a bare board. Something else you're going to need obviously is a power supply as well. So we've got an ATX power supply. Now you only actually need to connect up two connections to your motherboard if you're doing this as a bare board. So that is the main 24 pin power connector, which is located on the far side of the board near the DDR RAM slots. And also you've got the eight pin EPS connection, which is in the top left hand corner of your motherboard. This specific board has two of those connections on there. You can use either, and if you've got an older power supply, which only has a four pin connector, in a pinch you can get by and use that. It will still fit and it still will work. Also, it's probably worthwhile looking on your motherboard, looking at the rear IO to see where the USB stick actually goes. If you look at the BOSS flashback button, which is in the bottom left hand corner, if you're looking at it from the back, if you look just to the side of there, you'll see where the ethernet port is. Directly below there at the bottom is the BIOS flashback port, which actually has a rectangle around it to help you identify it. Something we also get asked a lot is, can you use the BIOS flashback port as a normal USB port after the BIOS flash? Yes, of course you can. It is a completely standard USB port in terms of how it works in Windows. So don't worry, you can use that on your computer. After you flash the BIOS and everything's up and running, you can use any components USB wise in that port. So I think that's pretty much it for an introduction. Let's head over to the computer and we'll format our USB drive, download the BOSS, rename the file, and then we'll get it ready for flashing the BOSS onto our motherboard. Okay, so we're on our Windows 11 machine here and I've just plugged in our USB drive. We've actually got a BOSS file on here from a previous version. So let's go ahead and do what we usually do. So let's format the drive. So right click on the USB drive, choose format. This will erase the drive in its entirety. Make sure it says FAT32 the allocation size set to default, and if there's anything in the volume label, I would suggest removing that. When you click on start, it's gonna give you a warning saying that this is gonna erase all of the data on the drive. Are you sure you want to continue? So let's click on start. There's our message. Yes, we're happy with that. So click okay, and our format is complete. So there we go, there is our drive done. If you've got a drive which is larger than 32 gigabytes, you can create a smaller FAT32 partition on that drive. We've done a separate video on that, and I'll link that in the video description. So the next part is to actually get the BIOS. Go to the MSI website for the B650M Gaming Plus Wi-Fi. Make sure it is the M version, not the non-M version. And just look at the side, make sure that your board looks like this. It's uh, pretty distinctive, so it should do. And what you want to do is go to the Support tab. And this should take you into Drivers and Downloads straight away. So we'll look at the BIOS files. So the latest one we've got here for this particular board is version 11 which is from the 20th of February, 2024. This is currently towards the middle of April, so it's actually a slightly older BIOS. Would have liked to have seen a slightly newer one available, but if it's, uh, if it's okay and there's no new processors out and also there's no security issues, then really there can be bigger gaps. So this one's been out in the wild for quite a while, so there shouldn't be any problems with it. There was a beta version of this one, as you can see below. You can choose to use a beta if that is the very latest and it adds certain functionality that you need. So with that said, let's download the BIOS. We're going to download this to our Windows desktop. You can choose to download it wherever you want. Just find somewhere where it's nice and easy to find. So click on Save. That should be done very quickly. It's quite a small file, so we can minimize this window. And now we've got our file on the desktop. So we're going to right click on this. We're going to choose Extract All. This is very important. 
click on extract and this will give you the new folder on your desktop so if we look inside the folder you'll find there's two files in there a text document which tells you how to use the boss flash and details of it and we have the actual boss flashback file itself now as it stands this file is completely meaningless to the boss flashback system so we have to rename it so click on the file name delete everything which is there and we want to call it msi.rom and then press enter you'll get a message saying that you're going to change the extension is that okay yes it's absolutely fine that's what we want to do and we'll click okay you should find that your boss file when it's changed to the rom file is 32 megabytes in size or 32,000 kilobytes so this is absolutely great what we want to do now is to put this onto our usb drive so you can just drag and drop it to your usb drive if you want to or use cut and paste whichever you want to do just make sure the drive actually has the rom file on it so when you're happy click on eject and then we can go over to our little test bench and get the bars flashed so we've got our usb stick with our bios armed and ready so let's get our little test bench set up so i was going to stick the board actually onto the box that it came in nice and simple thing to do power supply is plugged into the mains already and the power supply is switched off we've got our two connections which is the eight pin eps which goes into the cpu connector which is in this top corner and we've got our 24 pin main power connector which goes into the big port here so let's go ahead and plug those in so that's all connected up now so we can stick our usb drive in the correct port so find your ethernet port and it's the one at the very bottom there of the usb so just go ahead and stick the drive in so now we can turn on the power supply and next thing to do is to press and hold the bars flashback button hold it in for about two or three seconds and you should find there is a bars led just behind here which should start illuminating so one two three and release Potentially your power supply might turn on now as well. The fan might start spinning. And currently the LED light, hopefully you can just like see that there, is solid currently. And there we go, it started flashing. So that took a little bit longer than usual. That actually caught me by surprise. I didn't think it was gonna work. It was flashed a couple of times. Yeah, that's better. Right, I did notice then there was actually an error that occurred there, which is uh, possibly not being kept on camera and the wireless LED flashed a couple of times but then went off and it seems that I didn't have the USB drive pushed fully all the way in so even though everything was perfect because the drive wasn't fully in it just tried to read it couldn't find it and then it stopped so now we've got the two lights over here which hopefully you can possibly just about see so the CPU and also the DRAM LED that's absolutely fine the power supply is on I can hear that now and we can see that our BIOS flashback LED is flashing pretty constantly. I can actually so bright, I can even see it in the reflection on the camera lens. So at this point now, you just want to leave things, let it get on and do its own thing. And uh, at the end, you should notice that the BIOS flashback LED will turn itself off. The power supply will probably click off to, as to signify a reset or reboot. And you'll probably come back with the CPU light on or CPU and RAM possibly, not too sure on this particular board. But essentially just leave it let it do its thing should take somewhere in the region about three to five minutes if you find it flashing for considerably longer than that then it hasn't worked and it's unable to read the drive that is the most likely thing if you get it where it's just flashed a couple of times then stopped or solid light that means it can't read the usb stick if it flashes and just keeps on flashing and flashing it means that it can see the usb stick but it's unable to read the data actually on the usb stick so do bear those things in mind but with that said, let's leave this alone, let it get on and do its thing, and we'll be back when it's finished. So there we go, just heard the power supply click off, and the system then rebooted itself. Boss LED flashed a couple of times, and we're now left with the LEDs saying CPU and RAM, because there's no CPU in RAM. So at this point, we can turn off our power supply, and we're pretty much done. So there we are. Everything is done and dusted, so this time we can turn off our power supply. So that's off, you heard that clicked off and it's discharged. We can remove our USB stick now, so that is done with. At this point, the choice is yours whether or not you mount the board all into your case and do all the stuff, make sure that it's all okay, and then fire it up. Or alternatively, you can put on your RAM, processor, CPU cooler, and you can see if there's an output if you've got a APU-based system or one of the new Ryzen's where they do have integrated graphics. You just check that, make sure that it gets to the bar screen. That ideally is a good idea before you go ahead and do the build. Again, you can rule out any potential problems. 
But that is pretty much it, to be honest with you. So hopefully this video has helped you in your BIOS flashback needs. Again, do expect the unexpected. Sometimes things don't quite go right. And for me this time, not plugging the USB drive in all the way actually did cause a weird problem. And it still started to do the flash, but it just wouldn't do it fully. So do make sure that your drive's fully inserted and also formatted FAT32. Again, if you're not too sure how to do that, then you can check out the links in the video description. And if you've got any further problems, feel free to reach out to us, either in that comment section below, or alternatively, head over to our Discord. It's completely free to join, and you can go into one of the technical support channels or one of the specific bar support channels and uh, post any problems or questions you might be having there. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you have, smash the like button. If you want to see more content like this on a daily basis, maybe consider hitting that subscribe button and the chime notification. That way you'll be notified of future video releases. But for now, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. And hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.